Hello and welcome to a video tutorial from BlenderDiplom.com. My name is Jonathan Lampell and today I'm going to be showing you how to make some awesome fur using Blender and Cycles. So um, I made this image here and I've already modeled the cat and kind of put in you know the very few background pieces and such. Um, I've already added a texture but we're going to be adding the fur to the little kitten and making it look all nice in Cycles. So jumping right into the scene here you see what I have set up. Um, actually we're going to be working on a duplicate of this object just in rest position um, because that's easy, um, basically the best way to set up the fur and then we can pose it however we want later uh, if you want to do that on your own time. Um, so this file should be available to download and you can do whatever you want with it. So uh, you can see that this cat is already textured. If I go into texture mode um, it was just a you know quick quick texture painting job and so using you know reference images of course so we already have that to work off with but we don't have the fur itself so you might have a model of a cat with uh, you know you might want to add some fur to it or you might have any number of animals um, pretty much all animals at least mammals have fur so that's something you might need to do in the future especially if you're doing you know any sort of character animation that comes up quite a lot so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add particle systems for the fur and we're going to do this in a few steps because um, it's really really difficult to have it all in one particle system and then control it all uh, just like that so what we're going to do is we're going to have a few layers we're gonna have one particle system for the main body then we're gonna have one for the paws because that's a little bit different uh, we're going to have one for the face we're going to have one for the ears, so like little tufts coming out of there. We're going to have one for the whiskers. And then finally, we're going to have uh, one for the kind of scruff around the neck and going down under the chin, which is a little bit more fluffy. So um, I'm just going to jump right into it. First off, we're going to make one particle system here in the particle systems tab. I'm going to name this body fur. And I'm going to name the particle settings the exact same. Then I'll make them a hair. So you can see it just kind of adds a lot of hair. Um, we don't have to worry too much about it yet. Um, but under emission, you can go ahead and change the length to say, uh, let's go with what looks good. 0.3. Yeah, let's go with 0.3. And then I like to click Advanced. Basically, this gives us all of the regular um, options that you'd normally see under Particles, but it also applies to Hair. So this kind of gives us a simplified interface. However, it doesn't give us the flexibility. So I just click that out of habit, and there's a lot more stuff that we can do with it. So first of all, uh, this is just going to be the body hair, right? So we don't want it everywhere. And the way we can control where the hair is going to be is with the vertex groups here. Now, uh, we don't have any on this cat right now. Uh, you can see that there's actually a lot because I duplicated it off the other one. But we're going to make some new ones. You can see there are the old ones that I use. Um, but I'm going to make name this body underscore hair. Sounds like a nasty name. Because body hair is never, never really a good thing. But... I mean, maybe it is. I don't know. All right, so uh, we're going to go into vertex weight paint mode. Sorry. I did the vertex group, not the vertex color. So weight paint, we're going to select our body hair here. Press T. I can go into the toolbar. Hit add. And then all I need to do is just paint on where I want the hair. And see, uh, since I have... X mirror on under the options it's going to uh, mirror all of my painting strokes onto the other side of the mesh and if I want to see what's happening real time I can go into the particle tab down under density I can just say choose our um, vertex group here and then as I paint you know, it might be a little slower but you can see it easier you can see exactly where the hair is going to be so if I hit Z, I can see all the um, actual underlying mesh of where I'm painting. So if you find that helpful, you could do that. Uh, 
or you can also hit this button which exposes all of all of it so you don't have to keep going around and you can just paint and it applies it to everything under the brush regardless of whether it's being blocked or not so that's that's good and I'm actually going to do a little bit up the head here because that's going to be part of the body and there we go so now we have our hair concentrated in the right area and now we just need to make it look like you know normal hair and I'm going to go through the entire process um, for for this this hair um, and then we're just going to do the exact same thing for the feet the face uh, the ears etc so uh, we have it um, being emitted here's a number of hairs so you can see this is you know, I've set this to five there are only going to be five hairs so that's the exact amount of hairs that are admitted um, and you might be tempted to set this really really high right because we want a lot and a lot of hair but remember that we also are going to use children so I'm only going to use say 3,000 hairs here and under children I can choose inter in, is it interpolated or interpolated I I don't know um interpolated in I don't, I give up. Uh, interpolated. Yeah. So we want to choose that instead of simple. Uh, what simple does is it is it um, just puts the hair in a you know a certain radius around, uh, taking no regard to where it actually is on the geometry. While this option here actually disperses it throughout as if it were an actual um, on the mesh. So that gives us a much cleaner result. So that's what we want to choose. And you can see that now it's starting to look very fluffy. Now, first of all, let me delete all these materials that I had made because we're going to go make those later. But I'm just going to add a default here so that under render it will not be all black. There we go. So now that we have a material assigned, we can see it a little bit better instead of the black, which is really difficult to get a grasp on. So so now that we have this, uh, we can go ahead and comb it because all the options now that we need are under uh, the children. So once you comb something in the particle edit mode, you no longer have uh, any means to change the length or the physics or anything like that. So be sure you have the right length or else you're going to have to undo all of your all of your edits. But for now, this should should be a good length and we don't really need to do anything with you know, velocity, Brownian motion, or anything like that. So, um, I'm going to choose comb here, and press Z, and I can just go ahead and start combing away, right? Kind of going with the basic flow of the body. And this is just a really rough kind of initial pass, so don't be afraid if it doesn't look all that great. Just making sure you're getting the basic shape of it um, the way it should be, kind of from the side view. All right, so now we can go ahead and go in and add a little bit more, get a little bit more picky about how the hair is flowing, right? Because you can see that um, under the legs and stuff, it's not quite where we want it. I'm going to hit this little icon down here, uh, limit selection to visible so we don't accidentally comb things on the other side of the mesh. And now I can comb in between the legs. Kind of down the legs there. Kind of separate this a little bit. There's going to be a little bit of a you know gap or transition, that's just the way hair works. So um, but you know, hopefully it won't, it won't be very visible, you know, it's kind of on the back of the leg, so. Maybe perspective view would give us a better vantage point. All right. So here we go. Um, let me smooth that out a little bit. Now 
Okay, so it's kind of tedious, but you know, you just kind of go through, make sure it's all smooth. You can see this part looks pretty weird because it's all sticking out, but you just kind of comb it back. That part should go towards the tail. This part on the back of the leg should go down. As you can see, this is no exact science. This isn't really like a you know, copy every move that I do kind of tutorial where, I mean, really you're just eyeballing it and saying, hey, this looks better, so I'll do this. So, whatever looks best for you, as long as it, you know, kind of flows with the natural flow of the body. You see this part here is kind of weird, we can push that in. Oh yeah, and if you find it ever uh, intersecting the mesh too much or, or hitting it, um, there's an option over here that says deflect emitter. And what this does is it just keeps it on the outside of the mesh. So if you see if I set this, you know, high, uh, it's going to, you know, deflect farther and farther from the mesh. So if that's ever a problem, you can do that. But for now, 0.5 is pretty much always good. I haven't had too much of a problem with that, but just in case, it's a good thing to know. All right, so here we have our basic cat fur. It's pretty simple, not you know too much to it. You can spend quite a lot of time combing. Um, in my picture where I had like a saber toothed tiger, I definitely spent a lot of time combing that guy. Um, where you know I wanted it to look good, and I definitely you know I want this to look good, but it's tutorial, so you can take it as far as you'd like but for now this looks fine alright so there so that's looking pretty decent right it's it's flowing in the right direction but it doesn't really look fluffy right you don't have the 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 fluffy look to it it looks kinda like a wet kitten so the effects that we're gonna have here are all going to be done in the children panel here and you can see that we have a couple options. Uh, one of them is display and render. This is basically how many hairs you have. So you can see if you set this higher, you're going to get a lot more hairs. And the higher you set it, the harder it's going to, or the slower your computer is going to go. Um, and we can choose that a little bit later. Right now, we just want to see the basic shape of how things are going to turn out. So these uh, these effects here clump. You can see kind of feathering it. Um, if you turn it all the way up, it definitely looks like you know feathers or something where it's that that really looks wet. Uh, we're just kind of clumps it all together at the at the end point, and if you do it here, it's opposite where you know it starts really close and kind of spreads out. And I just want a little bit of that, not too much, maybe 0.2. So it's it's not going to make a ton of difference, but you know hair just tends to. Uh, tends to come together like that, so I'll leave it there. Uh, shape is saying like, I guess you can see it easier if I do that. Um, you can see it's just changing the shape of the actual um, clump, you know, pushing it towards the end or pushing it towards the beginning. Um, but I'll just leave that at zero. I think I had that at like 0.2, something like that. Yeah. All right, so moving on to length. This is just the overall length, pretty self-explanatory. But what I want to do is actually not leave it at 1. I'm going to leave it at point 0.8. And what this allows me to do is turn up the threshold a bit, say 0.25. So that means 25% of these hairs are going to be a little bit longer than the rest, which just gives it a more natural feel, um, I think. So instead of them all being you know, uniform, there's a little bit, a little bit of random length in there. Parting uh, doesn't really do much in this case, doesn't really help us, so we can ignore that. Uh, long hair over here, you know that, I'd, I've never figured out exactly what this option does. Sometimes it looks better, sometimes it doesn't. In this case it doesn't, so we're going to turn that off. So now onto the roughness, this is 
this is where it gets pretty good. Um, the uniform roughness pretty much takes a 3D texture and displaces the hair. Uh, think of like a displacement modifier. Um, displaces the hair using that predefined texture. So it's not something you can um, tell it. It's just like a generated noise, right? So it's not, you can't define it using your own texture. It's just a generated noise from Blender. So you see if I turn that up really high, you get this sort of weird, nasty looking, you know, noise. Uh, and that's the roughness. You can see that it's, it's a bald spot there. And the lower you set this, the more you know, frequency there's going to be. So you can kind of see, you know, get get an idea of what it does. Um, I'm going to turn this down to a really low value because, uh, you know, it just doesn't look all that great. So maybe like 0.01. So you can see if I turn that off, it does it does a little bit, but really that's not what we want. Um, one thing that we do want is endpoint roughness. And what this does is basically fluffs out the endpoints of the of the hair. So if I turn that on, you can see that it just takes the ends and just kind of fluffs them away from each other. So we want a fairly, you know, small value, nothing too much. But you can see already that looks so much more soft and cuddly than, than you know, that. So uh, what did I have? Maybe 0.05. I want a reasonable value. There we go. That's looking good. And then uh, shape does the same thing that the shave and the clumping does, but we can ignore that. Now the random roughness, we actually want a little bit of this, so instead of having it a uniform texture, it just kind of randomly pushes the, the hairs one way or another, so we add just a little bit of that, and you can determine the size, so you can see really well how this works, you've set that really, really low, you can see that the roughness is, you know, exactly that small, you can see where it kind of applies uh, that no kind of noise, and the higher you set this, uh, the smoother it's going to be, right? So those little lumps get larger and larger until if you have that, then they just get really large and it just kind of goes over the entire body. So I think that looks good. That's it's good for hair. I think that's a nice fuzzy kitten. So uh, one thing we need to clean up is this bottom part of the feet that really doesn't look very good. So what we're going to do is go into particle edit mode again and go into length and then make sure you have shrink enabled and just kind of you know paint over this and it's gonna shrink those hairs right up there we go alright and you can see we have a few stragglers there so we can just take this cut brush just cut those right off you can see it still leaves a few children behind, but that's not really an issue since we're putting in the, the feet, the paw fur. All right. So there we have our main fur. That's pretty much the important part. Um, but we also have a couple other things. Um, I will leave you to try to do the pause yourself. It's literally the exact same thing. Um, well, actually, we may as well do it real quick here. Uh, just add a new particle system. Call this pause fur. Copy that. Actually, easy way to do this is instead of choosing particle settings 07, remember we named this body fur, right? So I can go under these and type body fur. And it'll give us the exact same settings as the one above it. However, I can press this 2, which makes it completely independent, and then rename it Pause Fur. So now I have two completely separate particle systems, but I don't have to go through the entire thing of, you know, redoing all the particles and stuff. So you can see that the, you know, children was applied. We don't want those quite yet, but it didn't apply any vertex groups. So let's go ahead and make another one for the pause. Another vertex group, label this pause hair. All right, and now in weight paint, we can go in, uh, make sure that one's selected, use the add brush. Orthographic side view makes this really easy. 
Let's see which there we go turn that so you can kind of see through so you can paint on both sides at once we just want it right there alright simple enough so now in the particle settings density pause hair and there we go that's where the hair is so we want this to be a little bit smaller and we also don't need that many particles so I'll turn this down to a thousand looks a lot more reasonable and actually taking another look at this we really don't need hair on the bottom of the feet because that would be kinda weird so back to actually weight paint is what we want pause hair I'm just going to subtract this very bottom part right there. Maybe leave a little bit in front. For the, you know, toes or whatever you're doing there. I was a little bit lazy. I didn't add in toes. So, sorry about that. All right. So, now we have it. Uh, obviously, we don't need it that long. So, under the velocity, since this is... Um, using the advanced options, uh, you have an option of velocity, which is determining the length. So think of velocity in the normal direction, which normal means um, perpendicular to the surface. So if you ever wondered what that means, that's what normal is. And we can turn that down to, say, 0 0.025. Maybe. Yeah, actually, that, that looks good. So then we can go to particle edit. Turn on children if that helps you see it better. Just kind of comb this down the foot. And then make sure the sides are all good for this. I mean, that was pretty... Pretty simple, there's not too much to the feet. It's really all you do. Uh, and then just kind of cut the bottoms off. So use the cut brush and just trim that. All right. So you're still gonna have a little bit of children there, but that's all right. You can have a little bit of fuzz, but as long as you don't have any nasty hairs. Uh, you can see that our you know, roughness looks really weird right now because that's copied off of the body. Um, but since we have different length hairs, it's going to look a lot different. So I'm going to turn that off for now, and then we can take a better look at it later. Um, so now we can kind of look at it and see what it needs. Uh, the clumping, don't need any of that. Length can go all the way up. And it looks like I need to comb it diagonally a little. Whoa, not cut it. Commit. There we go. Just so we don't have any holes that are looking weird. All right. So now that's looking a little better. Again, you can take as much time as you want to kind of tweak these, but now this looks good and again uh, the more particles you have um, in the emission section the more control you have over this so you can kind of determine that but the more particles you have the longer it takes to render as well so kind of a balance between the two and now we can see that we need a little bit of roughness ah oh, man there's always there's always some weird problem going on you know oh, some weird hair that's just randomly sticking out for no reason. All right. Oh, we can we can fix that in these settings down here. So, we need a little bit of roughness, right? So, I'll just add in some random roughness. Point 1 looks like it's too much. Uh maybe point 0.05. Uh you can see a little bit better if you add more to the display. So, let's try 50. 
It's a little bit more accurate, right? So a 0.05 random with a size of, you know, maybe 0. Mm, no, more than that. A lot of this is really just, you know, tweaking, guesswork. I mean, to be honest, that's, that's what it is. Um, you just kind of have to be a little bit patient when you're working with it. Just kind of look at it and see whether it looks good or not. And you might see, you know, a couple tiny little patches there, but that can be covered up because, you know, obviously we'll have more hairs when we're rendering and all that stuff. So that's looking fine. Um, I'm not really sure what those what those patches are, to be honest. Um, I can change the seed, but still, still has those there. But I can't really comb them away. So what is controlling them? I don't know. Um, sometimes, you know, there's just weird, weird stuff, but I think it's fine. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. It's just a little tiny thing there. It might have to do with the armature. Um, sometimes the armature does affect the the hair a lot. Um, oh, and one thing I forgot to mention, do not ever, if you are working with hair, go back into edit mode, which, I mean, you can move stuff around, whatever, no big deal. But do not break any edges ever. Uh, do not fuse things together. Don't add any geometry. Don't subtract any geometry. Don't rip any faces um, because then all of your fur will be broken and you'll see it sticking out all weird and it's just not a fun experience because then you have to restart this entire process. So be sure you have your mesh pretty much done to your satisfaction before you start doing any stuff with hair. So we have the paws, we have the main body, and now we need to do the face. So we're going to do the same way we did the other ones. We're going to call this face fur. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right. And again, we can use paws fur, make it a single user so we're not messing with the actual paws fur settings. And this face fur. And then um, turn off children for now. We'll need a few more because, um, remember I said it can be more accurate the more particles you have. So, in the face, that's a really crucial area. So, I'm going to turn this up to 3000, like the body. And then we can add a vertex group for that. So, I'm going to call this face fur. Go into weight paint. And just kind of paint over the face. Just to get a general idea. And you can see that the hair is actually slowing us down a lot. So in the modifiers tab, um, you can just un unview these and then everything will run nice and smooth. So that's that's where we want our hair. Um, I'll actually combine the fluff fur and the face hair together in this. Um, but if you want to get really, you know, detailed, you can add a, another particle system around the kind of cheeks where it kind of fluffs out and under the chin where you get that really fuzzy, whoops, a uh, really fuzzy hair. But without it, you can't really tell too much uh, unless you're going into a lot of a lot of detail. So. Uh, obviously, cats do not have hair in their mouths, in their eyes, or on their noses, because that would look really weird. So I'm going to take this and just kind of subtract. I'm using the subtract brush. Kind of taking it out of there. Um, and I want to turn off this option here so we can no longer paint through the faces. I can see a little bit better the geometry. Go ahead and add this part back in. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, 
but actually what we can do in the face, which we didn't really do in the other places because we didn't really need to, uh, we can turn down the strength, say point, you know, five or something. Go around the mouth. Uh, we don't actually want any around the mouth, so it's okay if that's completely blue. Uh, blue means no hair. Red means lots of hair. If you haven't, if you haven't guessed. Um, and we're gonna do the same around the eyes. Just kind of subtract around here. Because obviously we don't want fur coming out of the eyes. That would be absolutely terrifying. Okay. So there we go. There's our fur. And we can select that in the density group. Uh, did I call that face or head? Yeah, face fur. There we go. So you can see that's centered around the face, and we don't have any on the nose. We don't have any coming out of the mouth or out of the eyes. And that's looking pretty good. Um, and it's more or less the right length. But if you look at a if you look at a cat, you know it has shorter hair towards the front. And then as it kind of gradually goes into the rest of the body, hair, um, it starts getting longer, right? So uh, we can also, under length, use the same vertex group. And you can see that some of the hairs kind of shrank, uh, especially in these areas here. And I'll show you how to do that. So in the white paint, you can see, does it really not select the right? There we go. Um, you can see that that one's green, and that means that the hair is actually going to be shorter since we are applying this paint map to both the density and the length. So, for instance, if I want to do make the hair shorter in the shape of a smiley face, all I would have to do is that, and it, you can see it kind of shrinks right where I painted. So, kind of a dumb example, but you get the point. And what I'm going to do is just kind of paint where I don't want the hair to be that much or that long. Just kind of around the nose and a little bit more around the mouth. Maybe in this area a little bit. Okay, you can make this as detailed as you want, but for now that's fairly good. I can just take the blur brush and kind of mix these together a little bit so there's not so much, you know, contrast between the two. All right, so that's looking pretty good. It looks like somehow I accidentally kind of hit these other areas, so... I can just go to the subtract, take the strength up, make sure I don't have any other ones, and it looks like the ears also don't have any, so let me add the ears back, and oh yeah, that reminds me that ears also do not have long hair, nor do they have hair coming out from, well they kind of have hair coming out from inside them, but we'll fix that later. Uh, so I'm going to use the subtract brush. Kind of half, half power there. Turn those down, and then on the inside as well. And then kind of take out the inside where the where the skin is, and correct any. Oh man, it's hard to hit it exactly right. Okay. There we go. There we go. That's looking pretty good. And now we have our length for our hair. So that's how you set that up for the face. And now we can add in a few children so we can see it well when we're when we're combing it. <laughs> it looks like a like a really fuzzy teddy bear or something. Obviously not exactly what we want it to look like, but you have to admit, it looks pretty funny. All right. <laughs> looks like he's got a mustache and a beard. 
All right, so particle edit mode, we can comb the comb the hair. Uh, we just want to comb this kind of back, right, and away from away from the nose area, and we'll tweak this later, right? The ears kind of go up. There's a little bit of weird area around the ears where it kind of diverges. That goes down there. That's pretty much how it goes. Um, so you can go around and tweak a couple areas that didn't turn out so well, uh, especially around the eyes, kind of nose. You can see that the hair is supposed to gut and go up around here. Um, one thing I, I've noticed that there is an X mirror option for hair, but it really doesn't work. Even though this is a completely symmetrical mesh, it is not mirroring anything, which is kind of annoying, but you know, it's one of those things, hopefully it'll be fixed. Um, I'm not sure whether that's an actual bug or not. Um, I feel like if I report it, there would be some reason like, oh, well, it's not something or other, and I don't know. I don't want to be a bother, but on the other hand, I don't want to you know, neglect something if it actually is broken. All right, so there's kind of come the hair around the eye so it's not poking into the eyeballs. All right, so this is looking good, except for that, obviously. <laughs> that does not look good. So as you can see, adding fur is definitely a tedious task, so that is why I'm kind of rambling on about random stuff, stupid jokes or whatever. So bear with me. We're almost done. We're almost to the cool part where you can see um, all the all the good stuff. Oh, some phone's going off. It's not mine though, so we're all good. All right, so comb this up the ear, and there's going to be this weird. Um, kind of like line um, where the hair kind of separates but there's nothing really you can do about that I mean if it's seriously bugging you uh, you can go in and add another particle system right there and just kind of fill in that gap but I mean really it's I mean the back of the ear it's not gonna be very prevalent um, so I wouldn't worry about it but if it's a bother you can definitely fix it pretty easily All right, so we just want this to kind of flow around the geometry. It would be pretty sweet if there was a way to kind of draw, maybe with like grease pencil or something, the kind of the flow of the hair in major areas. You know what I'm talking about? Um, and then it would just kind of automatically apply it. So if you said, you know, draw something down the body, up the tail, down the legs, under there, and then, you know, just kind of, fills it in. I feel like that would be a really cool tool. Um, if I were a programmer, maybe I would attempt that, but but I'm not. I don't know. Oh, where'd you go? Yeah, I'm, I'm really not very good at programming at all, so looks like I'll just keep that on my wish list. Though I did hear uh, somebody is doing something with hair systems and something cool with that. I think it was guy on Blender Artists, I feel like. Oh, what was his name? Anvil Soup? Yeah, he's he's doing something cool. I don't remember exactly what it is. I try to kind of keep up to date, but you know, there's a lot of stuff to follow up on. Alright, enough, enough rambling. This is looking good. So now we have the face fur. Now we can move on. Oh, well, I forgot something, of course. That is this hair kind of goes around the mouth, right? It doesn't, doesn't go down the mouth like a, you know, barbarian. He kind of has a civilized mustache here. All right. Now we're good. Now we are 
done. So there we got the face fur. And now we just need to do the really easy parts of the ear fur and the uh, whiskers. So let's go ahead and add those whiskers. Take that off so we can move around faster. Oh, um, by the way, I'm using 2.69. I really should have mentioned that earlier. Um, and, you know, that has a new Cycles hair shader, which we're going to be using in a second. Um, but another cool thing is you can drag down these lists now. Really handy. Uh, it's it's nice, so you can you know kind of see everything all at once. It's a nice, nice feature there. All right, so I'm going to copy face fur, make it a single user. I'm going to call this whiskers. Whiskers. All right. I don't actually say it like that, by the way. All right. But this, we don't need 3,000 whiskers. We need like five. And then um, in the vertex groups, we're going to make another one. You can see this is pretty pretty redundant. Go into weight paint like everything else. Whiskers. This is Whiskers01 because I have one for the original cat that I did for the preview, so don't worry about that. I'm just going to paint this little area right here. And also, don't forget the couple above the eye. Because cats have whisker, or kind of, they have like really long eyebrows. I don't know if you've ever seen that, but they do. All right, so now we can choose that in the vertex groups. Whiskers. All right, so there they are. And I don't think we need children here. So you can see they definitely need to be longer than that. So we, remember, we go to velocity. Point one. That's that's pretty good. Uh, maybe. Oh, point oh five, something like that, and then a little bit of random. So like point oh two five. So they kind of go in a random direction. Um, since we have the eyebrows, we need a few more. Just kind of. Maybe more than I thought. How many how many whiskers do cats actually have? I don't know. Okay. But anyway, uh, this is looking looking pretty good. I don't know why it's not adding any over on the right side of the eye. That's kind of bugging me. So even though it's you know random, maybe it has to do with white paint. No, not vertex paint. If I add in just a little bit more. Oh, that's because I'm dumb. All right, whiskers 01. There we go. Now it's working perfect because that's the one we just painted. And now uh, you can make them longer if you want to. But I think that's good. And whiskers, you know, are not are not completely straight. They're not, you know, rigid. So uh, all we need to do is just under physics, enable a little bit of Brownian motion. And Brownian motion is, um, if I if I remember right, it's like the the random force to particles that like you know keep gases in the air. But don't quote me on that. Um, okay, so under under display and render, we're kind of getting towards the render step here. Um, there's a step size, and that's just how many kind of subsections this hair has. So you can see if I turn that up to three, it's going to get smoother and smoother. Um, so we don't want to, you know, see that many, because that's just going to slow us down. So I'm going to keep that to two. Um, and under render, I'm going to turn that up to four, so we have a nice smooth whiskers, because whiskers aren't you know, jagged like that. All right, so we're almost done. Now we're going to uh, go do the ear hair. Ear hair. And then copy the face fur. Make it a single user. 
call it ear hair. Also kind of a nasty name. Nobody really wants a lot of ear hair, but you know, sometimes you gotta, gotta put in some ear hair. <laughs> All right. Um, what am I looking at? Children. Yeah, turning off children. Okay. Now we're making another vertex group. Ear underscore hair. You can see I'm pretty bad at naming conventions right now. Um, I'm just kind of throwing them in there, but let's see. Weight paint with ear hair selected. Gonna add it just right there. That's literally all we need. Just that little that little area. Then under the particle system, length, ear hair. And there we go. Such awesome ear hair. Um, Alright, so velocity. We just want to make it a little bit longer, so 0.04. And now we can comb it. Particle edit. Comb that hair. Kind of push it. Push it out a little bit and in. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? The little hair that kind of comes up from the sides of the ears and kind of makes it all fuzzy in there. All right, so there we go. That's looking good. And now we can just have a couple children. Oh, we don't want a lot. Obviously, that is too much. Um, turn down the length a little bit and up the threshold so we get a random number. But even as much as one is good. And then I'm going to add a just a little bit of random roughness so it's not so straight. There we go. That's looking good. And now we have all of our hair. So we can view it all at the same time here. And that is our completely fuzzy looking cat. Um, oh, it looks like I didn't really add too much uh, too much roughness to the face. Good thing I saw that real quick. So select face for here. Down under children, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of endpoint roughness. Obviously you don't want as much as on the body because um, it's not as fuzzy. It's more smooth with the surface. So just a tiny bit of that tiny bit of random roughness, roughness, excuse me. There we go. Now it kind of blends blends a little bit better. All right, so this is looking good. Uh may not look so great in the viewport. It looks kind of kind of messy you might think, but it'll render out quite well.